Hey guys, and welcome to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be looking at part two of how to paint our armies in a non heavy metal style. If you've been looking for ways in which you can paint your armies that's different than the typical style we see for Space Marines and Warhammer 40K in general, then you have found the right video today. Now, in our first video, looking at how to not paint heavy metal, there'll be a link up above we looked at how to paint the Leviathan box set Lieutenant in Raven Guard colors using mostly a dry brush technique for the armor. We're gonna kind of move in the opposite direction for this. We're gonna paint Ultramarines, kind of an opposite to that black armor of the Raven Guard. And we're gonna have our Ultramarines be a little bit brighter than the typical ones that you see. Their armor's gonna be a little bit less flat and muted and have a little bit more brightness to it. And in order to do this, we're gonna be using an airbrush. Now, before you turn this off, because maybe you don't own an airbrush, maybe you don't have access to an airbrush, or maybe you simply believe that using an airbrush is hobby cheating, just hold on a second and let me say this. Just because you don't have an airbrush doesn't mean a video that's using airbrush or talking about airbrushing isn't useful to you. I find that whenever I'm preparing to work on different hobby projects, sometimes I'm not going to be using an airbrush, but I will watch videos in which guys are using airbrushes and maybe even that's the main tool of what they use. Because there's a couple of important things that when airbrushing, we use a little bit more than we do when we're using just a brush, but are just as useful. And the first one is color mixing. One of the things with airbrushing is you use a lot of color mixing because it's very easy. You get very smooth gradients, things of that nature. And it really lends itself to being able to mix colors together. So a great thing to watch for is how to mix colors. Another great thing to watch for is where highlights and shadows are placed. Airbrushing makes it very easy to put on shadows and very easy to put on highlights. And it kind of shows you the overall of where they should be. So even though you may be going, I'm not an airbrusher, I don't want to be an airbrusher even, whatever that is, there's still some useful things that you can gain from that. So I would encourage you, maybe just give this video a chance and afterwards then cast judgment on it. So our goal here is to really move away from what we all view as the typical Warhammer painting style, because let's be honest, sometimes it gets extremely tedious to be doing recess shading and edge highlighting on every single space marine. So in order to move away from that, I've come up with a couple of different styles of how I like to paint my armies. Now, I will say, none of this is really unique to me. Hobbyists have been doing this forever. I've just compiled some that I've been using recently that I would like to give to you and maybe help kind of push this information out there for hobbyists who maybe they want to get their armies done faster and edge highlighting can really slow you down. Or maybe they just want a totally unique looking army that their friends or other competitors won't be putting it on the table. The real thing that inspired me to start doing some of these non heavy metal style videos is the fact that in the midst of painting my Space Marine Army project, if you don't know what that is, I'm simply painting up eight different 2000 point Space Marine armies in the course of 12 months. And then at the end of that, we're gonna be giving away two of them and we are getting really close to the end of that. There will be an update on that here in just a couple of weeks, so watch for that. But one of the things that I did when I sat down to plan out these eight armies was I didn't want to do eight armies painted in the same style and essentially just do eight armor variations doing the same thing over and over. I wanted a bunch of different ways in order to paint my armies. So my Ultramarines are going to be painted extremely different than how I did my Raven Guard, and that's gonna be extremely different from how I'm doing my Space Wolves, and that's different from how I'm doing my Blood Angels, and so on and so forth. So with these guys, I really sat down and I went, you know what? I want it to be a bright blue 
one of the easiest ways to do that is to use my airbrush. Uh, they're gonna have a very matte look because I like the look of the matte armor. I don't like the shininess or the gloss on it. That's just personal preference. I really like that matte look but I still want there to be some contrast. I still want there to be some pop of color. And you'll notice that they're not getting super bright. I'm not creating a massive amount of contrast because once again, I've got eight armies to get through. I wanna get these guys onto the tabletop fairly quickly. I want them to look nice, but I don't need them to be display level. I need them to look good from the board to look okay in pictures and videos, but I'm not gonna go to huge lengths to make them perfect. So if you're looking to get an army out quickly, this is gonna be a great way for you to do that. We're using an airbrush to pretty much get the armor from A to Z all the way done. Obviously, you can do this in different ways. You don't have to use an airbrush. But I will say one of the major perks to an airbrush is the speed in which you can paint things. Now, something like this repulsor executioner would be a tedious work for me if I'm using a brush. But when I have the airbrush, I can take what would have been hours and hours and hours of work and I can get it done in 30 minutes or maybe even less. And it makes my life as a painter, especially painting a lot of stuff, extremely efficient and, and it makes my time far more valuable than spending hours and hours and hours using a brush for something my airbrush can do in less time you don't have an airbrush that's not a problem but if you have the option of getting one i would highly encourage you to get one but with that being said let me just say this when it comes to airbrushing a lot of people go well, if i get an airbrush i can just do all this amazing stuff as soon as I get it. That's not necessarily true. There is a learning curve. An airbrush is no different than anything else within our hobby. It's a tool, and it's a tool that comes with the need for a skill set. If you get an airbrush, one of the things you're gonna run into is a lot of different issues. There's a lot of troubleshooting that goes on with airbrushes. There's a lot of learning how to care for one, learning how to use one correctly, you're gonna grow it and become better at it the more you use it. But don't expect to pop it out of the box and automatically be doing what all these other people you're watching are doing. That's an unrealistic expectation and don't set yourself up for that frustration. It's the same as when you watch a video on YouTube and you watch this guy paint and it's, it's a how-to and you go, man, he makes it look so easy. My models are gonna look just as good as his does. And then you sit down and you begin painting and you begin following his or her process and quickly finding out that you're not getting the same results. Well, it's not because his video is flawed. It's not because what she's doing is inaccurate. It's because the reality that they have a skill set that maybe you and I don't have right now. And we need to develop that over time. So when it comes to airbrushing, if you're looking at getting into it, if you're new to it, don't become frustrated because it can be frustrating. But simply develop that skill set. Ask a lot of questions of people who have some expertise. There's groups out there, there's discords, there's, if you're older like me, there's Facebook groups that you can join that would love to answer those questions. There's people like me, content creators, people on YouTube, on Instagram that would love to help and, and help you grow that skill set as an airbrusher. But with all that being said, if you are looking forward to finding another way to paint your minis, that's not the typical edge highlighting, recess shading, heavy metal style. Let's go ahead and jump into how I went about painting my Ultramarine Stern Guard Vets. For this initial blue color, we add our ink tints into this Mediterranean blue to kind of deepen it up. It gives it a little bit more of a purplish tint, and we're going to cover the model all over with this, doing this in a couple of stages. One thing that you can do is you can leave the 
bottom parts where it would fall into the most shadow you can leave those with a little bit of the black showing through to kind of deepen up and provide the most contrast between those colors but if you want to just cover the entire model with blue that's fine as well We then head straight into our Mediterranean blue and we're going to focus on the places where we want it to be brightest, the tops of those pauldrons, the head. Now obviously the head doesn't matter on this one. This is the sergeant and he's going to be getting a red head anyways, but normally for your typical ultramarines you'd want the head to really be brighter because you want to bring some attention to that area. I will say when doing models for the tabletop one thing is you don't just want to place realistic highlights one of the things you want to do is define where to catch the eye and a lot of times that's a face or a helmet and even if those might be a little bit darker i would highly encourage you to brighten them up make them the focal points uh, it'll make a big difference in your model standing out on the gaming table you can already see the difference that it's making with this Mediterranean blue, how much it is brightening up that model. And that's exactly what we want. We want to bring that color in and make it really pop. Now we could mix in our sky blue into our Mediterranean blue, but I go straight up into my sky blue because I'm gonna control the gradients. I'm not gonna put it on super strong. You can see how narrow of an area we're kind of putting it in, and we're not gonna use a ton of this. This is going to be our brightest highlight with the airbrush. And so we wanna make sure that we're just putting it on kind of the tops of those highlights you can see on that pauldron just in that one spot where all the light is reaching its pinnacle and its brightest point if you overdo it with this step and you cover too much of an area you're undoing all the work you've previously done so you need to be careful in this. Less can be more in a lot of cases when it comes to these brighter highlights with the airbrush. Now you would be totally fine if you didn't want to recess shade your model. Um, I decided because this is supposed to be the Stern Guard veteran, more of an elite unit, uh, this is the sergeant out of it and we're going to make a video out of it that I would go ahead and I would take the time to do some of that and especially because I wanted to show that like with my ultramarines I like to use something like the black templar as a recess shade because it flows pretty nicely I water it down a little bit for this but it's got that nice black bluish tint to it um, I think it's Infernal Brush I've seen use this as well as a recess shade in it and I loved it when he did it so I, I kind of stole that from him. But if you are looking for a recess shade for your Ultramarines, Black Templar is a great option for that.
Once again, because I've used the airbrush, it's not necessary that you provide these edge highlights unless you want to. Again, I'm doing this on video. I'm doing this with pretty important unit or model, or at least one that I really like the look of for the army. You can see me painting the helmet here, which is unnecessary because it's going to be red, but I don't think I realized this until after uh, when I really stopped and thought about the fact that I was painting a sergeant and it, you know, it should have been white anyways because it's a stern guard veteran, but I wasn't thinking clearly. But I decided that I did want to do some edge highlighting here. And you'd think I would go with a brighter color, but because my last color I had used on the armor, I had actually used through the airbrush, I had done it as a pretty light gradient. So at no point did I lay down with my airbrush a full string sky blue color. I had really uh, done it very lightly in order to kind of uh, build up that gradient between the Mediterranean blue with the blue ink in it all the way up into that sky blue So I can come back again with my sky blue and use it at full strength as my edge highlight And it works really well. It makes the model pop, but it doesn't have a whiteness to it It doesn't go too bright. It ties in with the previous thing that I used as my brightest layer Now, if you really, really wanted to push this model, and of course I have a full unit of these guys along with a lot of other guys to paint, so I didn't really want to push it as far as I could. I would grab a little bit of white and I would make that my absolute very brightest highlight in corners and in areas that would reflect the most light. And that will really make the armor shine a lot more and really make it uh, pop more than you think it, it, it's a very little thing you're only adding that white to very small areas but it will make a massive difference if you've watched my videos then you've seen this a million times painting weapons the same way that i always do painting the undersuit largely the same way that i always do this coal black is definitely my favorite black that I've ever used, that I ever use at all in general. Um, it's got this nice matte finish to it that I like, but just simple stuff. Getting all of the undersuit with it, getting all of the weapon casings, whether it's his bolt gun, uh, whether it's his uh, bolt pistol that he's holding there. The biggest trick here when painting these colors is the fact that the armor is all the way finished. And not only is it all the way finished, but we've used the airbrush, which means it's really hard to go back and fix mistakes that we might make while painting. So if we're painting our gun and we get some of that black paint on our armor, it will be a lot harder to come back and to fix it because we don't have uh, one simple color that we used on it we use those gradients and so just be extra careful if you're airbrushing you finish up something that's a large piece of the model like the armor be extremely careful in how you paint it so that you don't go back and ruin something that is very hard for you to fix when painting tabards or large pieces of cloth here's what I like to do because normally I find that when I'm painting them, I'm painting them in brighter colors. I'm painting them in this type of color, which is more of that cream or an off-white. I don't know what it is with tabbers or clothing that, that just tends to be the colors that they are. Go with thin layers and slowly build them up. You can see here, especially on that bottom part, that a lot of that blue is showing through. Uh, it makes it much smoother, especially because with clothing, it's going to be large, flat surfaces. There's not going to be a lot breaking it up. You want it to look very smooth. And so to avoid a lot of brush strokes, to avoid a lot of paint building up in weird ways, thin your paint down really well, um, not to a glaze or anything like that, but, but thin it down well 
and don't worry about coverage. Just expect that it's going to take you about three passes to get it opaque to where you want it to be. And also understand that if you're going to be throwing a shade or a wash over top of it, that's really going to help to sell the color. So it doesn't have to be 100%. You get it to 85% opaque and that wash will do the rest of it because it's going to sit in those recesses and then you're building up highlights on top of it. So just take your time and with those clothing, especially clothing that's using lighter colors, build it up really slowly, use a lot of brush strokes and, and use a lot of layers to do it. You'll notice here that I'm not using a white in order to paint the white on this model, but I'm instead using this gray. Now let me talk about this gray first. This is one of the best coverage grays I've used. I absolutely love this color. There's, I also have a, a, a couple more gray colors from Pro Acryl that I find their coverage to be one, incredibly smooth. That's just Pro Acryl paints in general. They're so smooth. I love that they have a matte finish because that's my preference. But the coverage on these grays is absolutely phenomenal. And I know for a lot of grays, they come out really chalky. They don't get good coverage. There's a lot of issues with them. So definitely if you're looking for a gray that is a lot more user friendly, that's a lot easier to use, check these grays out. But again, you'll notice that I'm using grays in order to paint the white sections of this model. That's because if I used straight white, number one, coverage wouldn't be great, but number two, it would just read really bright and really flat, and that's not what we want. You're gonna notice that I'm gonna paint on this gray, and it's going to look like a white. It's not gonna come across as gray, it's going to read as white. Obviously, if I used a mid-tone gray or a dark gray, it, it wouldn't read the same way. I'm using a light gray, but I'm going to use this light. And then I can come over if I want, and I can highlight it up with a white. I can edge highlight it with a white. I can use some volumetric highlighting with a white. But using the white mildly, using this gray largely as my white, and that's going to sell your whites. It's going to give them more depth, make them not look so flat. It's gonna give them a, an opportunity to have good shadows in there. Because if you paint just white, maybe you're gonna lay a wash over top of it. It's just gonna look dingy. So with this, we don't even need a wash. We already have our, our shadow color in the gray. We just kind of build up from there.
Once again, when painting a large section like this, you're really close to the armor. Uh, you kind of want to get the whole section done. Uh, especially for me, I realized my mistake. I'd spent all that time painting the armor of the helmet and then I needed to go ahead and change it and that was aggravating. But take your time, be careful, because if we screw up and we have a stray brush stroke and we get it onto this armor, it's going to be a pain to fix it in a way that doesn't make it look obvious. So you can see here I'm using small brush strokes because I don't want to use long brush strokes and then end up risking getting it onto the armor. Be very controlled in your application when you've finished large sections and you don't want to ruin them, especially when you've done it with an airbrush. I love using sepia ink as my washes. I think it has a very strong color. It has kind of some purplish undertones to it. It's just a really good color. But the biggest thing is when using the ink as a wash is make sure you water it down significantly. They will be extremely strong. So make sure you get it good and water down. Otherwise it'll come on and, and it will really change the color and temperature far more than I think you want it to and it'll make them look very sepia instead of just kind of tinting them. Because I want a cleaner look for my ultramarines than I do some of my other armies that I'm painting, I do use Nuln Oil. If you've watched my videos, you've seen me use Rattling Grime, which I love to use as a metallic shade, water it down a bit and put it on there and it looks absolutely amazing on a lot of your metallics and your armors it gives them a little bit more of a worn look than say a nuln oil does because it, it tints them a little bit with that little bit of grayish brown that is in the rattling grime and it's beautiful but with these guys we want a clean look so we're going with our straight nuln oil now you notice unlike the other two colors that we use to do some washes is this is not actually a shade color. 
it's because with our tunic we're going to water this down to a, a wash consistency and we're going to really focus it on the shadows i'm not even going to put this on uh throughout the whole tabard but we're going to focus on the places that we want it to be darker and push it into those areas so it's a wash but it's a very controlled wash to decide where we want our shadows to be Now, the biggest mistake really that I made on this model was the color of the red on his helmet. I think I should have started from an Antares red and built in a lot more shadows and gone up from there. So where the helmet really should have popped and been bright and stood out, it didn't. And that was a mistake on my part. I could be, you know, cool and say, oh, it was because I was trying to really put the focal point on the blue armor. That wasn't it. I just made a mistake and that happens. And uh, I think off camera, I'm going to go back and I'm going to fix this guy's helmet and make it look a lot brighter. So it ties in better with that bright blue armor that we have going on. Here you can see uh, going back with that white and just doing an edge highlight here. It'll be very, very small areas that I pick out with the white to paint. I don't want it to be large sections because I want the white to really show as the brightest parts of it. So once again, it, it's gray. It's going to read as white, but I'm not using white. I'm using gray. I like to use this rainy gray color on especially the undersuit as opposed to the gun casings and stuff like that. I'll use it on the gun casings, but it's a nice warm gray and I think it helps sell your, your blacks as being uh, a little more natural, a little more um, less m metallic even. And with how matte the color is on these guys' suits, I really wanted 
the, the guns to maintain kind of that matte finish to them and uh, the undersuit especially not to look shiny or anything like that. And we're doing this very simply. It's, it's just edge highlighting. We're really just picking out those edges. We're not doing much more than that. Nothing volumetric or anything of that nature, but just coming across getting the brightest edges. There's going to be a huge jump between the black that we've used and this gray. So understand that and, and use this kind of sparingly over the black where it will really become overpowering and, and those transitions will stand out way too much. I say this every single time I use these colors, but for anyone that maybe sees these videos and goes, oh, I'm gonna go out and get the same colors as he does. If you are doing that and you are gonna use this Vallejo Silver, uh, it's an airbrush color, it's very strong. Um, I would highly recommend that you you use it very sparingly. It's, it's going to make a huge color shift from our dark aluminum with the Nuln oil washed over it. So we really want to put it on the very, very brightest reflections uh, on little corners. When we're doing like our, our bolt gun, you can kind of see that I'm just putting it on edges and using it maybe less as like as a normal highlight and more as just a glinting highlight. More as just like this is the absolute brightest points, you know, putting it on, on little rivets here. Um, the corner of the stock or uh, the the part where the barrel would catch the most light and using it in that way but use it very sparingly and another thing is even if you're not matching colors you can use a big jump in color in your metallic your steel colors as long as your highest jump your your biggest highlight it, it's going to be really bright but it's going to be really focused in small areas Just like we did with our shade for this, we're really gonna do that with our highlights. It's gonna be a pretty thin paint because we're painting a large surface. If you've ever painted things like tabards, things like what this Stern Guard veteran has on, you've noticed that it's very aggravating because you get brush strokes and it doesn't look smooth and, and it just is kind of aggravating. Um, you go to edge highlight it and you realize that a vast majority of the paint is not is not on the edge and it's just such a jump. So we really thin down our paints and we're gonna come over with multiple, multiple layers. Another way to do this would be to stipple it and uh, that's one of my favorite ways to do cloth to make it look a little bit more natural and a little bit more worn. But for these guys, I don't wanna take the time stippling them. So we're gonna thin this down and we're really gonna come over it in multiple, multiple coats, slowly building it up. And you hear multiple coats, use two, three, four coats, and you think, oh my gosh, it'll take forever. It really doesn't because our paint's thin enough that it's going to dry pretty quickly. Whenever we put the paint on, we don't have a lot on the brush and we put it on and then we drag it and we drag it and we drag it. And that kind of helps the paint dry as we're dragging it along. So it, by the time I get done with one pass through the tabard, I can really come back and start again on it. And trust me, even though it is a little bit more time than you might do if you just edge highlighted it, 
it's completely worth it in the quality that you're going to get and being able to build up some of those gradients. But I will say, again, be really careful because this is the point where you're at the end of a paint job. That tabard goes up against his legs, which we've already painstakingly painted with the airbrush. We make mistakes. It is really, really, really hard to fix those. So be careful all the way through when painting things like this. And here he is finished. This was an absolutely wonderful model to paint. I really like a lot of the models in the Leviathan box set. So excited to get more of them done. Hope you guys like this. Hope this was useful and maybe can help you guys with the airbrush and even some of you guys without the airbrush. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for taking the time. I hope you hit that like button. If you're not subscribed, Man, it doesn't cost you anything and it would really mean a lot to me. We are so close to 1,000 subscribers. And once we get there to 1,000 subscribers, we're gonna be giving away either a Leviathan box set or an Age of Darkness 30K Horus Heresy box set, whichever uh, the winner of the giveaway prefers. We've got some great stuff coming up this year. Excited to get back into videos and having them out more regularly. That holiday season was, man, really a killer at the end of the year but I'm really pumped. We got a lot of great stuff. Be looking for that Space Marine Army project coming to its end here soon. Hopefully within a month or so, we'll be done with that and we'll be looking to pick out some winners. Got some new projects that we're planning for 2024. It's gonna be an exciting year and I cannot wait to do it with you guys. So until next time, I'll catch you guys later.